Hello and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sora Darkchild, and welcome to finally the finale of Let's Replay the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogies. After finding out that um, Iris is actually uh, Valerie, no, not Valerie Hawthorne, uh, what's her name? What was her name? Dahlia Hawthorne. After finding out that Iris was Dahlia Hawthorne, we ended up cross-examining her. We pressed her on all the statements that she was part of a plan and put into motion by uh, Morgan Fay. She was supposed to be channeled by Maya, not, not Maya, uh, Pearl, so that she could kill Maya and make Pearl the new uh, head of the Fay clan. But apparently, unbeknownst to her, the plan failed, and in order to protect herself, Maya channeled Dahlia. And now that Dahlia is gone, all that's left to do is to question Maya on the events that happened. Which means at this point, I gotta be careful what I press for any of her testimony and what I present as evidence for certain uh, parts of the testimony. So, this is our last chance to prove both her and our client not guilty. Let's do this. February 10, 9, 3.36 p.m., 2019. District Court, courtroom number seven. Now then, before we proceed any further, I'm going to announce the results of the test we found before earlier. Tess? Yes, Tess. On the bloody dagger that was found stuck in the pine tree. Oh yeah, that. I totally forgot about that. That's the weapon that Maya Fey used when she fought with the victim. So what are the results? Was it the victim's blood or... Due to the time constraints, a full test wasn't possible. However, there's one thing we can say with certainty. The blood that was on this dagger was not of the victim's blood. That is all. Now then, let's restart this trial. So it wasn't Misty's blood on the dagger. Then whose was it? I'm sure both the defense and prosecution know this, but this trial is rapidly coming to a close. Both sides will need to show some firm evidence with their claims. I understand, Your Honor. From what I've heard, the witness is dangerously weak, physically speaking. So let's finish this quickly. Took the words right out of my mouth, Goda. Agreed. Very well. Please bring in the last witness. Witness, please tell us your name and profession. Maya Fay. My profession is, um... I'm an assistant manager of writing co-law offices. Maya. According to the magazine I have here, you're a spirit medium of the curing channeling technique. I... I'm frightened. The Fae Clan. 
I don't want any more to do with it. Oh, Maya. The pain the Fey bloodline causes must be unbearable. Very well. Now then, Miss Fey. When the event occurred, what you were in the garden of the inner temple. And you witnessed the moment of Miss Elise Duxnam's murder. Is that correct? I, um, I... I didn't see any... Straighten up this instant, young lady. Strengthen up this... Oh, is it? It's straighten up. Okay. Straighten up this instant, young lady. Huh? Pick up your head and speak clearly. There's always time to cry later. But I... Your mother was killed right in front of your eyes. There's nothing you can do to change that fact. But there's something you can do. You can finish this. You've been watching the whole thing, right? You've seen the witnesses come out, and you've seen us squeeze the truth out of them. Now it's your turn. Let's hear your testimony. On the night of the crime, what exactly did you see happen? Witness, if you please. Yes, your honor. At the inner temple. I was passing through the garden on the way to a spare prep room when it happened. Suddenly someone struck me over the head. I stumbled and ended up against the stone lantern. I think I screamed, help me! Then... Something warm splashed over me. That's when I lost consciousness. Hmm. So you were struck on the head. I suppose it must have been this staff. Maya, the person who hit you. It was Dahlia Hawthorne, wasn't it? I I'm sorry, Nick. I just... I couldn't see. I don't know who it was. Maya, think hard. Sorry, Nick, but I really couldn't. Huh. Can't say it was an especially good night for young ladies to be walking around alone. It seems that it will be hard to determine the criminal through testimony alone. Very well then, Mr. Wright, begin your cross-examination. Maya, hang in there. She doesn't look well at all. I was passing through the garden on the way to the a spare prep room when I happened. Suddenly someone struck me over the head. I stumbled and ended up against the stone lantern. I think I screamed, help me. You think you screamed? But you're not sure? Listen, I was a complete wreck. It was dark, and I couldn't see my attacker. Was it a man? A woman? An adult? A child? I had no idea. I was scared out of my wits. Believe me, my dear. I am certain I would have soiled my robes. As though I thought this person might attack me, so I... So I... Anyway, I'm pretty sure I screamed, and I thought that it was my last hope. 
Wow, it sounds like poor little Maya really was out of her mind. But I wonder what that statement meant by her hope. What should I do? Press her for that? Let's press her on my last hope. Wait a minute, Maya. What's this la my last hope stuff? Um, what? What do you mean by my your last hope? No, no, no. That's what you said. You said my last hope. Huh? What? I said what? Look, you were facing an attacker that you couldn't see, and you screamed, right? You screamed, help me. Um, yeah. But you testified that you screamed that because you thought it was your last hope. Oh, well, you know, it's like, what do you call it when that happens? Maya's not doing well up here. Oh, yeah, um, I... Oh, that's right. I remember now. I was facing my attacker, but that's not who I was screaming at. W what did you just say? Yeah, that's right. There was a... It was the person behind my attacker that I was yelling at. That's who I was screaming for help. Ah! What is it now? I messed up. I didn't... I didn't mean to let that slip out. Huh? Witness, are you absolutely sure of what you are saying? Behind the attacker, there was another person? Well, um... I am, well... I, uh... I meant to keep that part a secret. What have I done? Huh. It takes a ton of pressure to make a diamond. That's what I always say. A ton of pressure? You're in a court of law here. Her, you can't make things up or try to hide things in this chamber. Witness? The information you just presented is vital to the case. I want you to add it to your testimony. I could see the man lit by... behind my attacker. By the light of the stone lantern. Objection! So... There was a man standing behind your attacker? Um, yeah. That man, he's the killer. He stabbed her from behind. He's the one who killed Elise Duxnim. Otherwise known as Misty Faye, your mother. The killer? Maya, you know who killed your mother, don't you? Uh... What is the meaning of this, Mr. Wright? To be frank, Your Honor, I think she is in shock and quite confused. That's why she hasn't noticed the huge problem with her testimony. Huh? What do you mean? What problem? Maya, on the night of the crime, that stone lantern was out of commission. Huh? What? It's true. There was no light anywhere in that garden that night. No! Order! Order in the court! Mr. Goda, explain this! Add the pressure, pureness of milk to the perfect, clear darkness of coffee, sister. That is the state of the witness's mind right now. 
a cup of cafe azul latte. Cafe ole? Is that even legal? Mr. Tread's words are the milk and you are the spoon, your honor. I am a spoon? I'm no spoony bard, I'll have you know. You must have noticed too, Trite. This witness's mental state is highly unstable right now. It's not hard to understand why she would make a little mistake like that. Sorry, but that's not going to cut it. What did you say? If there truly was no light in the garden, then there's one... Then there's a fatal contradiction in the witness's last bit of testimony. N Nick? May I? Recall the witness's statement about her attacker. She said that she didn't know if it was a man or a woman, an adult or a child. And yet... The witness could describe a person that was standing behind her attacker. And she quite clearly described him as a man. Ah! In other words, that would have that would have mean that Maya actually saw our mystery person. Despite it being so dark that she couldn't see the face of the of her own attacker. No! Order! 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 What in the world does this all mean, Mr. Wright? Are you saying Miss Faye saw the real attacker under pitch black conditions? Objection! Trite, do you have any idea what you're proposing? How could she even seen in dark? How could she have seen in dark? In the dark? There was no other light source in the scene. There are some things that you can only see in the dark, Mr. Godot. Maya, did you see who the killer was in the dark? And now, you're trying to cover up for him. Cover? For the man that killed their mother? There's only one conclusion I can draw from this. You know who this man is. Please, Nick. I don't know anything. Please, I'm begging you. Huh. You talk a good game, Trite. But let's see if you can walk the walk. It was pitch black, so what could the witness see? I'm calling you bluff. N no, Nick, don't! Please, stop! Maya is dead set on protecting this guy. The man who murdered Maya's long lost mother. But I can't let him get away with it. I'm a lawyer. An officer of the court. I'm here to find the truth. All right, Mr. Wright. Time to show us what you've got. Who is this person that Maya Fey saw in the darkness? Take that! Because it was pitch black, Miss Fay was able to recognize her killer easy. I'm sure the court would like to see for itself how this is possible, yes? What? B but how do you propose to show us something like that? It's easy. We just need to recreate the conditions of that night. Conditions? Your Honor, the defense officially requests... That all the lights in this courtroom it be turned off.
This is... But it can't be. Ha. Huh. That was a nice bit of deduction, Trite. Well, everyone. This is the man Maya saw on the night of the murder. Order, order, order! Prosecutor Goda, what is the meaning of this? Surely you must be shocked to hear yourself accused of such a thing? Why aren't you denying it? Ha. Huh. Your Honor, you're asking the wrong person. W what do you mean by that? If you got a question, ask the witness. That's one of my rules. Well, Maya, how about it? What you saw that night. Was it three glowing red lights? Well, witness, answer the question. Y you're wrong. I... I I never saw that. M Maya? I thought the person that stabbed my mother was a man. For a totally different reason. But what? Witness, uh, Mr. Wright. Stop your chattering, Your Honor. Ch ch chattering? If it's worth asking, ask the witness. That's one of my rules. All right. Well then, let's continue with the testimony. Please tell us how you knew the killer was a man. Y yes Your Honor. I didn't realize until after I woke up, but... The killer. When I came to, I was just lying there on the training hall floor. By the time I got back to the garden, the place had totally changed. The torches were lit, and the body was gone. All of the snow around the stone lantern had been carefully cleaned up too. Since the person did all that work alone, I just assumed it was a man. Hmm. So, it was after the crime took place that the witness came to think her killer was a man. Yes, that's right. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I... No need to apologize. It says, Mr. Godot said, you're utterly exhausted. It's only natural that you'd be a little confused. Also, if you consider the situation you described, it doesn't seem too much of a stretch to assume that the culprit was a man. Mr. Wright, proceed with your cross-examination. Okay, I gotta be careful what I press for this one. When I came to, I was just lying there on the train hall floor. By the time I got back to the garden, the place has totally changed. The torches were lit and the body was gone. Hold it! The torches were lit? Yes! That's how I noticed the whole scene had changed. I'm going to say it was the killer who lit the torches. I mean, who else could it be? The killer probably lit them since it'd be impossible to do it any cover-up work in the dark. However, if that's true, there's one thing that still bothers me. 
Why did the killer go to the effort of moving the body? That's true. It's hard to see how that would be of any advantage to the killer. The only one who would gain anything from that would be... The only person that was at the inner temple, Maya. Very well. Let's hear some more about the condition of the crime scene. And all of the snow around the stone lantern had been carefully cleaned up, too. So you're saying your killer cleaned up the snow? I... it did look really odd. The snow was removed in an unnatural looking rectangular shape around the lantern. There was a lot of shovels around the inner temple. But they're all really heavy. Way too heavy for me to use. An odd fellow indeed, this killer. Why on earth would anyone want to take snow away? Well, there's one thing to think of. Didn't you say that a lot of the victim's blood sprayed on the s onto the snow? Y yeah. The area I collapsed in ended up being splattered. In other words, the killer's purpose was to hide the bloody snow. I think that's the most reasonable explanation. Hmm, perhaps. However, there's something still bothering me. If the killer just wanted to hide the snow with blood on it... There was no need to remove that amount. That's true. He could have just scooped out the snow that was stained with blood. It looks like there are some mysteries behind this issue. But I think this will ex help explain them. Uh, let's go back a bit. By the time I got back to the garden, the place, the place looked totally different. It had totally changed. Naturally, the killer must have done it, right? Yes, I think so. But why would the killer tamper with the crime scene like that? There must have been something that the killer desperately wanted to hide. I... The truth is, when I saw the crime scene, I left something. You did? Yes. I felt like the killer was hiding in hiding the evidence for me, for my sake. W what? Hiding it for you? Everyone knew that I was only one in the I was the only one in the inner temple that night. His sister Bikini Hick came back and looked at the garden. She may have thought you, that you have done it. No, she definitely would have thought so. And you're saying that's why the killer cleaned up the crime scene to make it look like nothing had happened? Yes, I'm sure of it. Well... That's certainly an important piece of uh, information. I want you to add that to your testimony. Yes, your honor. I think it was for my sake that the killer cleaned up the evidence that of what had happened. The body of Elise Duxton was carried away all the way to the Hasakura Temple Courtyard. Then at the garden, the real crime scene of the crime. The snow, while oh, the suspect was covered in blood, was scooped up and removed. A reasonable 
It's reasonable that to believe all this was done in an attempt to hide the true crime scene. However, there's still one matter that seems somewhat odd. Oh, and what would that be? You must have figured it out by now, Mr. Goda. It's the message written in blood on the lantern. It was written very clearly on the white stone lantern. Maya. Ah! If the killer was so motivated to protect Maya from suspicion, then why didn't they wipe the writing off the lantern? Ah! You're right! Order, order, order! But Mr. Wright! Isn't it a fact that the killer was trying to cover up the scene of the crime? Indeed. But it doesn't make much sense to move the body and remove the bloody snow. Then not wipe off the most incriminating thing of all. A bloody writing. Objection. If that's the case... Do you have an explanation for the killer's mysterious behavior? Why would this killer move the body and remove all that snow, but then leave the lantern, the bloody writing on the lantern? I don't know what the killer's plan was, but it's a fact that the killer left the writing there on the lantern. There must be a reason for it. Well then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your opinion. Why did the killer leave the message written in the written in blood on the lantern? The killer didn't notice it. Prosecutor Gota, earlier in this trial, you gave me some good advice. Once you eliminate the impossible, Whatever remains must be the truth. Maybe you're not as dumb as I thought. The real killer wanted to disguise the fact that a crime had occurred there. If that's the case, why wouldn't he... They wouldn't have left the bloody writing on the stone lantern on purpose. Therefore, it must mean that they didn't notice it. But that doesn't make any sense. The torches were all lit and everything. There's no way any normal person would have missed something as glaring as that. You're right. There is no way any normal person would. What? What are you trying to say, Mr. Wright? There's only one person involved in this incident who could have missed seeing the bloody writing altogether. And who would that be? Who is that person that would have failed to notice the bloody writing? Well, who else do you think it is? Take that! Mr. Goda, this is what you said yesterday. My eyesight is pretty messed up. Even with these huge goggles on my head, I still can't see everything. You can't see everything? Is that correct, Mr. Godot? This lantern was submitted as evidence today. I would like the court to think back at back to the moment it was first presented. Th this lantern! There's something written on it! Why? It's written in blood! <laughs> Nonsense. This lantern... It's as clean as a whistle! Mr. Goda, just admit it. There are certain colors you can't see, correct? You can't see red on a white background, can you? That's right. We went through this once before. 
during the poisoning at Tres Bien? This is the apron that the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the crime. And somehow spilled coffee on it. There's something still bothering me, Mr. Goda. Why have you not explained the blood stain on the co to the court? Blood stain? What blood stain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor! The blood color stain that's smeared all over the apron! That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a blood stain. You could see coffee on a white apron, but you couldn't see the ketchup because it was red. Ha. Huh. It's strange. In a black and white photo, these letters would have appeared b black to me. I wonder, why am I the only one that can't see them? So then, Mr. Gora, are you admitting it? Are you admitting that you can't see the red writing on the lantern? Hey, Gramps, didn't you know? That's the reason why I don't drink red tea. I wasn't sure about it until now, but I just can't believe it. Prosecutor Goda is the murderer. But there's no going back now. I finally figured out the truth. Mr. Goda, the defense at this time formally accuses you. You are the murderer of Miss Elise Duxton also known as Misty Fay. It's hard to believe this may be true, however... Once again, Mr. Wright has brought up, up a... disquieting fact about you. Huh. Just make sure you don't fill out the ins indictment. In, in red ink, Gramps. Come on. How does a little graffiti make me into a killer? Besides, it's not like my name that's written there. Objection! I'm certain that the killer wasn't able to see the color red. This is rich. Do go on, Trite. The answer is right there at the scene of the crime. In the snow. In the snow? How so? Well, for example, why did the killer move all that snow? Your Honor, you said it yourself. If he wanted to hide the bloody snow, why not just take out the just that area? Yes. Why didn't he just take out that area? Oh, could it be? Yes, the killer couldn't see the color red. Had the killer couldn't see the red blood that had spread, seeped in, into the snow. And so he had to remove all of the snow. He couldn't be sure of where the blood has landed, so he removed the whole area. Objection. Isn't it more than like isn't it more likely that the killer couldn't see the blood because it was dark? Not a chance. The torches were all lit. He would have been able to see just fine. It seems that once again, this trial has taken an unexpected turn, to say the least. Can you explain this, Mr. Godot? Hold it! 
Wait, wait just a minute. Maya? What is it, witness? Mr. Goda isn't the killer. After all, he didn't even come to the inner temple until two days after the murder took place. He didn't show up until after that old bridge got fixed up. Objection. Maya. You can't testify to something like that. Why? What do you mean? Ye After the murder happened, you didn't even exist. She didn't? I'm afraid I don't follow. Are you senile, old man? We established this just a little while ago. After the murder, this witness was unconscious for a long time. Because she was channeling Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, that's right. P please, your honor, let me add to my testimony. Nick, please listen to me. Maya, do you plan to cover for Goda no matter what the cost? If that's the case, then I've got no choice. Your Honor, let's hear her testimony. If it means we're going to hear the whole truth, I say we should not silence her. Ha, huh. nicely done, Trite. Very well. Let's hear the witness's testimony. Please tell us what happened at the inner temple after the murder. Yes, Your Honor. After I woke up, I began channeling and my spirit left me, as it were. But Lil Pearly was there at the inner temple, too. After the incident. Curly was also stuck on the inner temple side at that night. The next morning, she looked around but couldn't find anyone. The next day, when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room. That's when Mr. Gona arrived at the inner temple for the first time. He found Pearly first and cheered her right up. Who's this Pearly? That's my little cousin, Pearl Fay. Hmm. So, when did you hear about this? Oh, just a little while ago, when I was in the medical office. I'm terribly sorry. But what you heard from someone else is simply not admissible as testimony. What? Come on! Pearly would never lie to me. She's a way too, uh, she's a way more honest person than I'll ever be. Real smart, Maya. You always know the best things to say when you're under oath. Huh. The prosecution has no objection. We believe the witness. M Mr. Goda! Let's just move on with the cross-examination if the defense has no objections. This is highly unusual, but, well, Mr. Wright? Let's get this cross-examination started. <laughs> Pearly was also stuck on the inner temple side that night. The next morning, she looked around but couldn't find anyone. The next day, when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room. That's when Mr. Goda arrived at the inner temple for the first time. She found Pearly first and cheered her right up. He cheered her up? That's what Pearly said. She said he was, was a very nice older gentleman. 
Thank you for looking after my cousin, Mr. Goda. And here I was thinking you were nothing more than a coffee addict. Huh. Cut it out. You're making me blush. This guy is really beginning to get on my nerves. In more ways than one. The truth is there aren't ma that many places to look on in the inner temple side. The policemen were all busy going over the garden with fine tooth combs. So I decided to carry out an investigation in my own way. Godot style. In the... I'm the same way. Hey, I like to hand down verdicts in my own way. Judge style! Hmm. Maybe I should ask some questions. Phoenix style. Let's ask about Godot's investigation. You said that you conducted an investigation of your own. Did you find anything? It looks like my investigation went about as well as yours, Trite. After all, I did miss the bloody writing on the lantern. Well, I didn't miss it, so speak for yourself, Goggles! The only odd thing I discovered was the beauty of the training hall. Beauty? Miss Faye, naturally. Misty Faye, naturally. Clad in her stunning Japanese garb, surrounded by the hue and aurora, aroma of Western taste. Western taste? Could he find a stranger way to describe gravy? So from where... So from there, you headed for the prep room. Wait a sec. Did Go... What What did Goda just say just now? I think I should... I think I just found this pro... Provibo weak point. There's only one thing for any importance here. Where Goda was... Where was Goda when the murder took... Was taken place? He must have already been at the inner temple when it happened. Otherwise, he couldn't have killed Elise Duxnim. Okay. One, two, three, four. Mr. Goda, the first time you crossed Dusky Bridge, you went into the Inner Temple. It was long before the murder took place. What? Well, why do you say that? Because he just made a fatal slip-up. The hanging scroll in the Inner... T in the training hall. Hanging scroll? But... Mr. Goda is right. He, that scroll shows a picture of my mother. Maya, I know you know who she, who it is, but there's something you didn't know. By the time the bridge had been repaired, two days after the murder, the hanging scroll in the training hall looked like this. What is that wonderfully delicious smell? The morning after the crime, someone covered it with gravy. Gravy? But why gravy, Nick? Because gravy was much more than a condiment to the culprit. Well, Mr. Goda, if you really hadn't seen the hanging scroll until after the murder, you wouldn't have had any way of knowing that it was Misty Fay. Well, wait a minute, Nick. Yes. T take another look at the hanging scroll. Look at the top. 
There's a crest there! Ah, uh, that. It's the mark of the master, correct? Exactly! If you know the meaning of the mark... Then you could guess that it was a picture of Misty Fay on there. True, but Mr. Goda described... It, what was underneath looked like this. Clad in her stunning Japanese garb, surrounded by a hue of aroma of Western tastes. Oh. Yes, it's possible that he knew what the crest meant. However, he couldn't have known that she was wearing Japanese clothing. Mr. Goda, on the day of the murder, you were hiding in the inner temple long before the crime took place. Can I ask you just one little thing, Trey? What is it? This whole theory of yours, it all rests on a certain assumption that I knew beforehand that a crime was going to be committed. Th that's right! Otherwise, there's no reason for him to sneak onto the crime scene. Of course, Mr. Goda knew about the plan. Huh? What did you say? Is it really possible that there's another person new about that plan? Take that! This crime was actually planned over a year ago. Morgan Fay authored the plan for her daughter's future. And these instructions were hidden somewhere in May Manor on for the for a year. However, by the time little pearls found these instructions, they had already been unsealed. Unsealed? Yes. The killer had read these instructions long before pearls ever found them. That's how he knew the crime was to take place at the Inner Temple. And you still insist this crafty killer is me? You bet I do. But you just said that the instructions were hidden. That's right. Mr. Goda couldn't have known where the instructions were hidden. If he really wanted to know, he had one great chance to find out. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, and when was that? During a visit. A visit? Morgan Fay told her daughter, Pearl, about where the instructions were hidden. During one of her visits to the detention center, that would be the only time for someone to have learned where they were hidden. Uh, eavesdropping on a visit at a detention center? Yes, it could be easy. Yes, it could be arranged if you're if you were someone with easy access in and out of there. Like for example, a prosecutor such as Mr. Gota. Order, order, order! Mr. Goda, you're under fire again. This murder, her could not have been carried out without prior knowledge. For you, and you. You were the only one that could have acquired this information before the murder. Humans are afraid of the dark, and yet, at the same time, we're fascinated and bewitched by it. Maybe that's why humans drink the darkness that is coffee. Um, 
sorry for always asking, but what does that mean? It means there's a reason for everything. According to your theory, the killer in this case eavesdropped on a conversation during a jail visit where, the, where he learned of the hidden plan for a crime. After discovering the plans, he hid in the hidden temple and waited for the crime to occur. Then, he ultimately took the person's life. And he did it all of that just to protect this witness. That's right. If you're accusing me of this crime, I have to ask you, why would I do this? This girl is nothing but a stranger to me. I've got no reason to go through that kind of trouble to protect her. I am, as you see. I am certainly not the type to rescue a damsel in distress. Hmm. The killer's behavior is certainly extreme, for lack of a better word. Even considering that the killer wanted to protect this witness's life. His behavior is still a little too unusual. However, you had a good reason, didn't you, Mr. Goda? You unshake an unshakable reason that forced you to protect this witness at all costs. I knew it. You figured it out, haven't you, Nick? Maya. I guess you were doing your best to cover for Goda. For the same reason, huh? Okay, Trey. I'm all ears. Let's hear it. It's very simple. My FA is a lot more than just a stranger to you. What's this? There's one person who lies at the very center of this whole story. One person that ties you and Maya Fey together in ex... in ex... I don't know how you say that word. There's a very good reason why Maya Fey's life is so precious to you. After all... She is Mia Fey's only sister. Mia Fey? You once worked alongside her. That was when you were a defense attorney. W wait a second here. Mr. Gordon is, is a defense attorney? With your honor's piercing intellect, you must have figured it out by now. The real name of this man, who calls himself Goda. His real name is Diego Armando. Isn't that right? The last time someone called me by that name was over six years ago. Diego Armando. That name rings a bell. It said, Your Honor, all of this is related to a single case. A case in which a convict named Terry Falls killed himself. Mia Fey's first time in a court, her, the tragic outcome left a deep wound in her heart. She knew that behind it all was a heartless, scheming demoness in disguise. But in the end, Mia couldn't tear off that disguise. However, 
there was one man who reached out to help her. Diego Armano, a senior defense attorney at the office where Mia worked. It's my fault. It's all my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself. Mia. You can't cry yet. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. I was moved by her. The way she put all of her faith in her clients. That pure, sweet heart of hers. That's why I could never forgive Dahlia Hawthorne. Mia and I thoroughly investigated that fake kidnapping incident. Then one fatal day, Dahlia wanted to meet with me. It had been six months since that trial. We met in the courthouse cafeteria. Ah, I just remembered. Six years ago, right here in this courthouse, you were poisoned. Even I didn't see it coming. Even I didn't see it coming. Dahlia Hawthorne slipped some poison into my coffee. Some newspapers at the time called it a murder. But very little information about the case was revealed to the press. But you weren't dead after all. No official reports ever have truly called it a murder. It was just in a deep, deep coma. I see. My body shut down, and my life became nothing but a long, deep sleep. That woman's poison did a real number on my nervous systems. I lost my sight, and all of my hair turned white due to the damage it caused. That's terrible. Apparently, it was a miracle that I ever regained consciousness. Five years have passed since I drank that poisoned brew. One, then one morning, my eyes flew open from the smell of a doctor's cup of coffee. For five years? You were asleep for five years? And the worst possible news was waiting for me. Mia Fey was dead. From the very moment I opened my eyes, I had already lost everything I thought I had. The woman I loved had been murdered. And the woman I loathed had been sentenced to death. The woman you loathed? The woman who was spiked... who had spiked my scolding hot coffee, Dahlia Hawthorne. Ha. Good old Mia. She didn't let me down. She got her revenge before she checked out. In the end, there was nothing, there wasn't anything, wait, there wasn't anyone waiting for me when I woke up. Th that's so sad. For someone like me, for someone who had slept away their best days, there were only two reasons left to live. It was for those two reasons that I decided to become a prosecutor. If I may ask, what were your two reasons to live? The first were you, Trite. Huh? Me? If I hadn't drank that stupid poison, Mia Fey would never have died, much less the way she did. 
You were the only person who could have protected her. But you let her die. It was all your fault. I... It wasn't like that. I wanted to see for myself what kind of a man you really are. So that's why you became a prosecutor. My other reason for living goes by the name of Maya Fey. Huh? You mean me? You were the only way I could make up for the sin of not saving Ma Mia. One year ago, when the, when the Kyrian village incident was resolved, it was obvious that Morgan Fay was planning something. Whenever her evil plan was, I was determined to stop it. My role as a prosecutor put me in a perfect position to do something about her. That's how you overheard Pearl was visit with Morgan at that detention center. I knew that the time was drawing near. Since I knew the plan, I thought I could foil it. My goal was to outwit the plan. I thought if I could do that, I could keep that girl from becoming caught, from being caught up in it. That makes sense. If Pearls had known that the pl actual purpose of the plan was to kill Maya, she never would have helped out. Finally, the day of the plan was drawing near. I contacted both my accomplices. Accomplices? Iris of Hussakura Temple and Missy Fay. I especially needed help from Iris. She was to take the fall in my backup in my backup plan in case we couldn't control Pearl Fay. But how could you contact my mother? How did you contact my mother? She had been missing for almost twenty years. Officially, yes. What? What do you mean, officially? You've heard about it, haven't you? About a strong ties between the main family and the government? Now that you mention it, Bikini did say something to that effect. She said that the master of the Kyrian channeling technique had great authority. Even without her official position, Misty Fae still wielded great influence. The police had been keeping an eye on her movements all this time. That's how I was able to contact her. Again, because of my position as a prosecutor. So my mother was cooperating with you. Don't ever forget. No matter how far away from you she was, she never stopped thinking of you. She was always... That's why I knew she would do anything to protect you. If you want to know how strong her resolve was to protect you was, look at the staff. Her staff? The one with the sword in it? The day the plan was carried out arrived soon enough. We met at Hasek for the first time at Hasekura Temple. That's when your mother showed me her special staff. I realized it then, just how far she was willing to go. She was ready to use that sword to protect you from Morgan Fay if necessary. Yes, even if it meant paying the ultimate price. Mother. 
that night, the night of the crime. There was just one way to stop Morgan Fay's plan. You mean pearls, don't you? We had to make sure she didn't channel Dahlia Hawthorne. Well, Pearl, what are you going to do tonight? Well, um... If you'd like, you can come to my room. Perhaps we can read some books together. We thought we could prevent her from playing her part in Morgan's plan. But she never showed up. She was worried and followed me to the inner temple. That was the thing we were most afraid of. And that's why Misty Fay had to do the channeling herself. She channeled Dahlia Hawthorne into her own body. What? What do you mean? If she channeled the spirit first, then Pearls wouldn't be able to do it herself. As master of the curing, Misty Fay's power was supreme. So that's how it went down. She channeled Dahlia Hawthorne so that Pearl would be able to. Ah! Ah! What? Is this true? My role in the plan was to make sure no one was going to hurt my affair. That's why I hid myself at the inner temple. Just in case you need to be saved by Dahlia Hawthorne. Goda. Anyway, that's all I'm going to admit to, Trite. Huh? There's no doubt about it. You're a great defense attorney. But you're going to have to do the rest yourself. The background leading up to this incident has been laid bare. There's just one question remaining, Mr. Wright. Who killed the victim? There are only two possible whole suspects right now. My affair. And I'm sad to say you, Mr. Goda. Well, try it. If you are the real deal, then finish this thing once and for all. Show us beyond a shadow of a doubt that you can finish this on your own. N no, Nick, please don't. Maya, I, I heard the whole thing from my sister in the medical office. That's why, that's why. I have to protect Mr. Goda. I can't do it. I can't testify against him. After all, he's the man who put his life on the line to protect Mia. And me too. Maya, I know that. N Nick. But even so, it doesn't absolve him from the crime. Please, Maya, testify. Miss Fay, your testimony, please. This is a final testimony. Don't bother trying to hide anything, because I'll know. I want to hear the truth from your own lips. I understand. I'm sure you're right. I'm ready now, Nick. 
All right, young lady. Tell us about the moments before you lost consciousness. What exactly happened at the time of the murder? The last testimony. The time of the murder. Just before it happened, I think I saw some red lights. Three of them. I thought I asked for help, but just then, I was splattered in blood. She was dead, though. She wasn't dead, though. Oh, and she struck back at the enemy behind her. Suddenly, the red lights went out, and the whole area was dark. Just at that moment, there was a horrible scream. Right after that, Dahlia collapsed, and I lost consciousness. These red lights... I thought you said you don't remember seeing them. I'm sorry. I thought I saw them, but then they all disappeared all of a sudden. Ha. Huh. Things break trite. Even the best theories. Who was it that stabbed Misty Fay? It looks like you still can't prove it. Maya is telling the truth this time. I know it. The rest is up to me. Well then, Mr. Wright, proceed with your final cross-examination of the witness. Just before it happened, I think I saw some red lights. Three of them. I thought I'd ask for help, but just then, I was splattered in blood. She wasn't dead, though, and she struck back at the enemy behind her. Suddenly, the red lights went out, and the whole area was dark. Just at that moment, there was a horrible scream. What do you mean by, just at that moment? Do you mean the moment when the red lights went out? Yes, that's right. The scream that you heard, then. Was it Dahlia Hawthorne? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure. It was a man's voice. What? what, what, what? what? So then, this, that screen came from the killer? That's gotta be it. I think Dahlia Hawthorne must have taken the blade and attacked the killer with it. And then the killer let out a scream of pain, huh? After that, the killer... Stole the blade back and delivered the final blow, I guess. Well, Mr. Wright, it seems to make sense to me. It sounds like a reasonable deduction, but I still kind of wonder. There's a contradiction. I'm sorry to say this, but that interpretation would create an enormous contradiction. Contradiction. That makes sense. After all, my deductions are almost certainly never correct. Remember the testimony she gave before? She just gave. Before the killer let out a scream, Maya said that she had already been splattered by the victim's blood. In other words, the blade in the staff had already been plunged into the victim. Ah! Is that right? She couldn't have struck back with a sword that was already stuck in her body. The weapon that caused the killer to let out a scream must have been something other than the staff.
If you're so sure about that, then don't keep us waiting any longer, Trite. There's only one thing I can think of. That could have been used as a weapon there. If Dahlia Hawthorne had already been stabbed in the back by the staff, what could she have used to strike back at her killer? Take that! Naturally, the dagger the killer brought to the scene of the crime. Oh, that's right! I forgot about that! This dagger was found at the se crime scene, stuck into a pine tree. Yes, the detective found that this morning and brought it to me. Dial Hawthorne struck back at the killer with this. And she managed to wound him with as well. Just because he let out a scream doesn't mean that he was wounded. For all we know, the blood on that dagger could have been from the victim. Have you forgotten that the blood was already been tested? Since we've learned it wasn't the victim's blood, it must be the killer's blood. The killer must have must have a wound somewhere on his body. So you're saying the blood on this dagger belongs to the killer? Exactly. A DNA analysis of the blood would prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And yes, Mr. Goda, it would prove that it's your blood. Nice theory, right? Order! Order in the core! Is this the end? Have I done it? Even he won't be able to change the results of a scientific test. Huh. Let me ask you something, Trite. Let's just say that it turned out that I was the killer. Do you really think I would be stupid enough to leave evidence like that? What? Just think for a second. This dagger was found this morning by a detective and brought to me. There was already blood on it, correct? But even so, I was the one who brought this dagger here to the courtroom. Y yes what does that prove? Well, if I really were the killer, I couldn't ha I could have washed the blade off and then paint planted another person's blood on it. That's it can't be. In any case, there's one thing I can guarantee, Trite. That blood, it doesn't belong to me. Not a chance. What? In any case, it seems to be established that the killer was wounded. All right then, witness. Continue your just Hold it. Wait a minute. What's the problem? Um, I... I know I probably shouldn't say this, but... There's a big contradiction in Nick's explanation. Maya? This dagger... You said it wounded the killer? That's right. But... But, but... But mis if Mr. Gara had really been cut with the dagger... His clothes should be bloody or have a rip in them, right? Um, Maya? Maybe he just changed his clothes? That solved the contradiction pretty easily. 
What are you talking about? Oh, it's not that simple at all. Remember back in the day he of murder? Of the murder? Everyone that was on the inner temple said they got trapped hip there. Oh, that's right. And once the bridge was fixed and the police added for the inner temple, Mr. Go... Mr. Goda was already there, waiting for them. He never had a chance to change his clothes. Ah! Order. Well, maybe he brought a change of clothes with him. But... No one could have predicted the lightning strike that shut down the bridge. Why would anyone brought a change of clothes? Uh, did the judge just start... Did the judge just say smart pills during the last recess? Well then, maybe the killer took off his clothes before they committed the murder. That way he wouldn't get any blood on him. Objection. That's impossible, Trite. You know how cold it gets up there late at night. Yeah. After a few minutes with no clothes on, you'd be frozen solid. Ah! Hmm. 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 Huh. So that's all you've got? I knew you weren't tough enough to finish this. Ah! Right now, if Mia Fey were here, if Mia Fey were here, she would have closed the book on this case already. If Mia was here, come on, Trite. What can you can you do it or not? How about it, Mister Wright? You've accused Mister Goda for being a killer. But can you prove it? Have you got even one piece of evidence? The question isn't whether I can prove it or not. The fact is, I have to prove it. That's the only choice I have. I was taught that it's one of the rules of being a lawyer. I can prove it. I'm going to bring your magnificent vengeance to fruition, just as you want it. Huh. That's good. Your finger till a finger, a fighter to the bitter end, right? Since there's just one piece of evidence that can prove your point, why don't we go for the unlimited penalty? Are you trying to pressure me, Mr. Goda? Because it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> I've got one piece of evidence we I need. Give me a break. You've got nothing, Trite. So what do I do at a time like this? It's simple. I gotta think outside of the box and approach this from a different angle. Alright then, Mr. Wright. Let's hear what you've got. There's one thing I've demonstrated in the previous cross-examination. The killer was wounded. That, helped, that was proven by the blood of the dagger. What? But we've decided that it was impossible for him to have hidden such a wound. If he had been cut by a dagger, there should have been a blood stain on his clothing. There's one place. One place the killer could have hidden his wound. What did you say? 
hidden. This is it. My last stand. I need to think about this from a different angle. I don't need to think about why there are no blood stains on his clothing. I need to show how he hid the wound. It's the end of the line. The final stop, right? Let's hear what you've got. Where's the location and where this killer hid his wound? Ha. Huh. I don't know what you're talking about. And frankly, I don't need to know. What I do know... <coughs> what I do know is that you'll never be half the lawyer she was. Isn't that right, Trite? What was that just now? Mia? It... it can't be. You're living on? Through him? Even as we speak, you're still hiding the wound! It's beneath your mask! During the fight, the red lights he's given off the killer suddenly disappear. Seconds later, the killer let out a scream. That's right. Your mask went flying off your face. Mr. Gota, would you mind removing your mask? If you have a dagger wound under there, el somewhere, then I'd say Say this whole case is solved. <laughs> ah. Just now, I saw her spirit in you. I never liked you. Six years ago, you helped the woman who put me to sleep by hiding her bottle of poison. And then, while I was sleeping, you let me a die. Well, you didn't care. You just kept living your pathetic, happy-go-lucky life. You even had the nerve to follow in her footsteps as a lawyer. I could never forgive you. That's what I thought. Mr. Goda. But I was wrong about you. I knew it from the very beginning. The truth is, the only person I could never find it in my heart to forgive was me. You? Yourself? I was the one that failed to protect Mia. Me and no one else. I try to avert my eyes from the truth to escape from the harshness of reality. I just couldn't face Mia's death head on, so I ran. I hid behind a mask, threw away my true name. I couldn't even deal with being a defense attorney anymore, so I quit. But, but, you saved Maya! Yeah, that was my plan. Up until just now, anyway. What, 
What do you mean? Are you listening, Maya? If you had really wanted, if I had really wanted to save you, then there's one person that I should have gone and talked to right away. Who, who would that be? Are you talking about Nick? But I didn't do it. I tried to get the help of Iris and your mother. But I closed my eyes to the most important man involved. Do you know why? The real reason? No. Why? I suppose... I wasn't really interested in saving you at all. Huh? I think I was just trying to salvage what's left of my own broken soul. I was trying to make up for the fact that I couldn't save Mia. Nothing more. That's why I let you walk right into the situation that I knew was dangerous. Forgive me. Y you're wrong! You put your life on the line to save Maya! Was it really for Maya's sake? Even I'm not really sure. W what do you mean by that? That night, in the darkness of the garden, when I saw her silhouette, A part of me must have known the truth. The truth that it wasn't really Dahlia Hawthorne standing there in front of me. It could have been Misty Fay, or even little that little girl. But I still picked up the blade, and it was like I was dreaming. I'm not sure exactly what was going on in my mind at that point. Was I really motivated by a pure desire to protect my affair? Or was it something else? Was it my hatred for a woman who had stolen everything from me six years earlier? Could it have been simply a desire for revenge? And now, I don't know anything anymore. I did learn something today, however. I finally realized that I was the arrogant one. I was just chasing an illusion, a fantasy. The stupid fantasy of defeating you in the courtroom. You were the one who made me realize my folly. You never ran away from Mia's death. Instead, you picked up where she left off as a true defense lawyer of the people. that one moment, I understood everything. Mr. Goda. I think you already know this, but if you don't, my name is Diego Armando. Mr. Armando, I believe in you. I know you were trying to save me. Hmm. Thanks. Y your wound! It's bleeding! Huh. Did you forget already? In my world, the color red doesn't exist. 
These must be my tears. Tears? Ever since I woke up from my coma, I think I've been waiting for this very moment. Mr. Armando. You do well to remember this, Maya. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. Hopefully I can wrap this up. This time, it really is over, isn't it? Defendant? Yes, Your Honor. Although you weren't directly involved in the murder, tampering with the body and the crime scene is a serious offense in itself. I understand, Your Honor. Mr. Armando explained everything to me very carefully. I knew the risk, and I willingly cooperated anyway. Very well. Before I hand down my verdict, is there anything you'd like to say? Well, there is one thing I'd like to say to Mr. Wright. I want to... I want to apologize to you. Apologize? To me? For what? For the case five years ago, of course. I just remembered. Weren't you poisoned by your own lover? Not exactly, but yeah, something like that. Even now, five years later, I can hardly believe it. She was going to do it. She was planning to kill me. It's not all that surprising. The two of you, you hardly knew each other. Huh? What do you mean? You and my sister. You only met twice. Huh? We only met twice? The first time you met was on the fa that fateful day. The day she poisoned Mr. Armando in the cafeteria of the very courthouse. The next time you met her was eight months later. You met her again on the day that she stole your cold medicine. And Doug Swallow was killed. N no way! It just... It can't be true! I mean, during our whole relationship, we were... For those eight months, the woman that you thought was Dahlia Hawthorne wasn't actually my sister. Huh? It wasn't Dahlia? I hope one day you can forgive me, Feeny. You... you... you mean... That's right. I lied to you for eight months. But why? Why would you do such a thing? Ever since she gave you that bottle the that day, my sister was trying to get it back as soon as she possibly could. Because of the police investigation and their surveillance, she couldn't move about freely. So that's why you... My sister. From the beginning, she was... Prepared for the worst. Prepared for the worst? She thought that you might somehow discover the truth. 
That's why she was always ready to deal with you at that moment's notice. You mean she was ready to kill me, don't you? She already had so much to answer for. I didn't want any more sins on her soul. I begged her not to do it, and she agreed to give me a chance. And that's why you came to me. You came to get the bottle pendant back from me in her place. But I couldn't get you to give it back. I failed at something even as simple as that. Eight months had passed and I still couldn't get it back from you. Finally, my sister couldn't wait any longer. She didn't consult me about her plans for you that day. It was the first time that she had ever happened. That was a bit strange, wasn't it? Up until that day, you two were partners in crime, and she would confer with you? I think she must have noticed. Noticed what? My feelings for you. If I had found out that she was planning to kill you, I would have done whatever was necessary to stop her. Even if it meant her life. Or mine. I Iris! After spending those eight months on your side, by your side, my feelings toward you, they changed. I have something to say to you, too. Yes? You really are the person I always thought you were. Even after Dahlia Hawthorne was found guilty, I still believed in you. Thank you. How many cups of darkness have I drank over the years? Even I don't know. I'll let you... I'll tell you, though. Right now, this one is the greatest cup I think I'll ever had. Don't you think so, Phoenix Wright? Yeah. I think you're right. The purpose of this trial was to rule on the murder of the victim Elise Duxton. At some point, I expect you to be tried for your role as an accomplice in this case. I understand, Your Honor. Very well. On the charge of murder, I hereby find the defendant... Not... Guilty! Court is now adjourned! So I guess it's all over. The way everything ended, was justice really served? The man who risked his life to save Maya is being sent to prison by my own hand. Of course justice was served. M mia I'm proud of you, Phoenix. Your defense was truly brilliant. But I couldn't save Mr. Armando. The man who cared so deeply for you. You're wrong, Phoenix. You did save Diego. You saved him from the only way possible. You mean... with that verdict? I think one day, you'll understand too. Phoenix, I want you to remember one thing. 
you were as good out there today as any defense attorney could ever hope to be. There's nothing more you can learn from me. M Mia! You've accomplished something I wasn't able to do. I owe you a great deal. Thank you. Mia. I'm sure we'll meet again. Someday, Phoenix. I've handled a lot of cases and seen a lot of things. And along this journey, I found myself asking just one question. What does it really mean to defend someone? I suppose today's case produce one possible answer. Nick! Maya! I guess it's just like my sis said. Mia? What did she say? That night, when I channeled Mia to get her advice on what to do, this is what she wrote back in my notebook. Don't worry. Phoenix will save everyone in the end. B but Come on, cut it out! Oh, with the gloomy face. Can't you see? Me, sis, and I'm sure Iris, too. We owe you for everything you've done for us, Nick. Maya. How? How can you be so bright and chipper after all that's happened? You were barely atta brutally attacked. You were e you even saw your mother murdered. Ouch! Fran Francisca! Still a softy as always, Phoenix, right? Excellent work, right? Huh? Mr. Edgeworth? When did you get back? Oh, that's right. I guess no one filled her in on that. Edgeworth and Francisca had actually been helping me. Helping you? If these two hadn't been here on the first day of the trial. The defense would have gotten no anywhere. The defense wouldn't have gotten anywhere. Wow. But where were you, Nick? I heard he fell into the river and caught a nasty cold, hold which forced him to sleep all day. Yes. He laid in bed shivering from his fever with Iris's hood pulled over his head. Oh, ouch! Talk about embarrassing, Nick. Nick, you definitely need more training. Anyway, thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. And you too, um, Francisca. I don't suppose. I don't suppose. There's room for me in this group, Pug. Is there? Oh, Larry. What's with the, uh, longer-than-usual face? I realized something when I was reborn. I realized that Larry was never of any use to anyone. Not even once. Hey, th that's not true. Right, Nick? What? You're asking me? Well, Nick, is it true? You've got a place in this world for me, right? Huh? Oh, um, yeah, of course. I knew it. Everyone would be better off if I was gone for good. No, no, no. Um, I... Oh, yeah. Those portraits you painted... They were really good. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? What? M me Why are you making that face? Huh, Edgy? Oh, well, um, yes, indeed. I certainly can't say that they lack resemblance. Do you really mean that? 
<laughs> what about you, Frenzy? Did I draw you well, too? Yeah! My beauty cannot possibly be captured by a mere crayon. Nevertheless, I recognize the effort you put into it, and that's worth something. So then, you'll do it? Like you promised? You're going to model for my next picture book? Gah! Don't get carried away! Well, how about that? I guess painting portraits is the only thing I'm good at. The painting of Pearl was pretty darn good, too. Who, if you ask me? Huh? Now that you mention it, I haven't seen her around. Pearls. Where could she have gone? Normally, she would have made a beeline for Maya. Oh, I'll go look for her. Be right back. Hey, Pearly! Right. You seem a little uncharacteristically puzzled. I suspect you were wondering how Maya can be so cheerful despite all that has happened. Yeah. To be honest, I can't understand it either. Francisca? That's right. She lost her family fairly recently as well. I think I understand how she feels. Maya is a much wiser person than if she appears, and I think she realizes something. Now is exactly the time when she needs to be as strong as she can. Well, what do you mean by now is exactly the time? Maya wasn't the only one that was badly wounded in the incident. In fact, there was someone else that was... There was someone that was hurt far more deeply than she. I believe it's for that person that Maya is trying her best not to cry. Someone who was hurt more deeply than Maya. Edgeworth. I think I'm starting to understand, too. Ow! Tell me, then tell me, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Who is Maya, her fate, tra being strong for? Take that! Pearl Fay? The poor kid, after all. The reason that she worked so hard to follow the instructions was because she loved and believed in her mother, Morgan. That's for her the good of the Fey clan. I'm sure she believed in every word. She thought she was doing it for Maya. That's why she was so happy. It shows how truly devoted she is to Maya. But it's a cruel irony that it was her exuberance that led to this tragedy. Maya Faye's mother was killed, and Maya herself was put into deepest peril imaginable. And that's exactly why Maya is putting on a brave face. She's doing it for Pearl's sake. Until she can see her smile again. Oh, hey! So this is where you all are. Wow, looks like we've got quite... Ouch! W what was that for, sir? Sorry about that, Scruffy. My whip just seems to have a mind of his own. What's up, Detective Gumshoe? Oh, you know, this and that. Anyway, congrats on your win. Let's go out tonight, pal. Dinner's on me. My salary's sort of kind of gone down a teensy-winsy bit, but that's all right. I made reservations at first class. 
French restaurant, and I... Yeah! Pretty good work, Scruffy. That whip was for your reward. Um, Detective Gumshoe, you said first-class French restaurant. You don't mean... Tres bien! Where else? I knew it. We're doomed. Come on, let's go, everyone. We can't keep Maggie waiting, pal. Hey, you cry, baby. Hey, you cry, baby. You're invited too. Oh, forget about me. Poodle and I will be at the loser's shack eating potatoes. You know, Maya is taking an awfully long time to get back. She's still out looking for pearls. Oh, Maya, what's wrong? Nick, what do I do? Pearly, I can't find her anywhere. Huh? I'll bet she went back home. That's all. I thought so too, so I called the village. But no one has heard from her. This has never happened before. As I figured, she has been badly hurt by this incident. She feels responsible for the tragedy that has befallen you, Maya. But none of this was her fault. What, what should I do? Detective Gumshoe? Yeah, what is it, pal? Could you guys go on ahead? But, but what about you? Maya and I will... We'll join you guys once we find pearls. Nick? Don't worry about us, Detective Gumshoe. We may be a little late, but we'll definitely be there. We have a lot of celebrating to do tonight, and I wouldn't miss this for the world. Y yeah, but you're... Ah! Very well, Phoenix Wright. We'll go on ahead. Don't keep us waiting, right? We won't. But where should we look? Where could Pearly have gone? Let's go, Maya. There's only one place I can think of that Pearls might have gone to. Is a temple? For pearls, I bet this is the very important place. After all, it's where this whole incident started. What's this? You're back again so soon? Sister Bikini. I thought that we'd be eating mashed potatoes alone tonight. So she's here? Pearly is here? She's in the training hall. Why don't you go hurry along and go see her? Oh, okay. Pearly's not here. Ah, Maya, the hanging scroll. Ah! Someone cleaned it off. It's gotta be Pearl's. Mystic Maya! But Pearly! Why? Why did you just leave like that? Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! I swore. I swore that I would never trouble you to... F of your... of you ever again. Because... It's all my fault! Mystic Maya's mother! That's why you came here? It's the least I can do to pay for your happiness. You don't have to do that, Pearly. It wasn't your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. Of course, I'm sad that my mother is gone. But how do I say this? I... I'm still happy. 
you don't have to lie just to make me feel better. No, really. It's true. There's only... The only reason I'm still here, her as... At all, is thanks to everyone who was there for me. My sister, my mother, Mr. Armando, Nick, and you. If every one of you weren't there, I'm sure I wouldn't still be alive right now. That's why I have to be strong. For all of the people that were there for me when I needed them. That's all I can really do. Mystic Maya. I'm impressed. You truly are the daughter of Mystic Misty. Sister Bikini. Your mother, Mystic Misty, was a strong woman indeed. I want to tell you what she said to me that night. After dishonoring the good name of Korion, I don't have the right to face my daughter. But still, Maya is always in my thoughts. It's true, she'll always be with me until the day I die. Your spirit was with her. That's why your mother was so strong. Even at the end, I'm sure she had no regrets. She'll always be with me until the day I die, huh? There's a rule or something all masters are to follow, isn't there? To never take the charm off until the day they die. Th that's the master's talisman. The thing that Misty kept by her heart and would never take off. It wasn't the container that is important, rather, it was the contents. Th that's... A photo? Ah! Mother. It's only natural for living creatures to fight to protect their own lives. But what makes us human is what we fight f is that we fight for others. But who do you fight for? How hard must you fight? That's the true measure of what human life is worth. We defense attorneys are warriors who are constantly challenged by that question. Even when the battle is over, and the bonds that connect us are severed, we always return, time and time again. Mia, Maya, Pearls, Mr. Armando, and Maya's mother too. I've learned that from all of them. Well, shall we get going? Everyone is waiting. Ah! This is the day to remember. A day when a lot of things were finally put to rest. I think we should celebrate hey, what we've overcome today. But I still can't. Oh, go on, sweetie. You can come back for your training anytime. Um, okay. Alright, I'm going to make a brand new start too. Sister Bikini, I'll be back for more training, I promise. I know, and I won't go easy on you just because you're the future master. I'll make sure to prepare a reservation for three for when you come back. <laughs> Alright. 
Hey, we're going to have a great feast today, Pearly. You know why? Because training is a battle of endurance. Okay, Mystic Maya, I... I'll eat lots and lots of food tonight. Um, you know, there's one thing I don't get, and you probably don't want to, but... What is it, Nick? Reservations for training is fine and all, but why for three? Oh, come on, Nick. What do you think? You're one of us, Nick. Next time, you can train right alongside us. Huh? I'll be waiting for you. Sister Bikini will take special care of you. Huh? Huh? I'll be... It'll be great, Nick. Nick, we're going to do the special course naturally. Huh? 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 That's a great idea. After all, Mr. Nick, you'll do anything for Mystic Maya, won't you? Who even walk on hot coals, right? We'll have a nice big meal right before we come back next time. Right, Nick? You know... I wonder if I can say just one little thing. Sure, of course you can. Oh, I love this part. I can't wait to hear it. I'm getting goosebumps too. Well then, here goes nothing. Action! And that's the end of that chapter. I am so sorry this episode took so much longer than I anticipated. But that's the end of the uh, Ace Att Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. The first three games in the series. Does this mean the end of the Ace Attorney series? You bet it doesn't. As we are now going to be moving on to when it comes out, the Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy. I'll be excited to do that one once the game comes out. In the meantime, however, I'll let you guys enjoy the preview for the first case in that game. And I hope you enjoyed this series. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment if you want. Ring the bell to be notified when our next video comes out. We do new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and occasionally Saturday and Sundays. All of this helps our channel to grow so you guys can enjoy more videos to watch. Till the next video and the next series, this is Sword Archild, signing off. Have a good night, folks.